although it might look like these are just some automatic jukebox players, the new Java ability of being able to put in a disc automatically into the jukebox using a hopper and pull them out with the hopper underneath when they're finished is going to be the biggest revolution to Minecraft Redstone clocks that we've seen in many, many years. Hello there, Ray here, and let me explain. Before I explain each of these machines and their benefit for redstone clocks in the future, let's first point out their intended use. So what you could do is place in a hopper that's pointing into the jukebox, then when you place a disc in, it just starts playing it. While the jukebox is playing the music disc, the jukebox itself will actually put off power. So if we put a piston up against it, it will extend. This same power is actually locking this hopper down below, so it's not able to pull out the disc. And when the jukebox is done playing the disc, the disc remains inside of it, but since it's not playing in music, the power is also removed. Then we can automatically pull the disc out by putting a hopper underneath. So if we do this, we'll see the disc ends up here. Then what we could do is just have the disc get pushed into a dropper, which when power will put it back into this hopper, repeating the cycle. I just got a small observer clock here, and if I attach this here, it piped it around and automatically started playing once again. So with a simple setup like this, you can create an automatic jukebox which will play your favorite melodies. But this can be combined with the fact that every single music disc has a different redstone strength when you have a comparator reading the disc which is inside of the jukebox. And this is how my automatic music disorder would work without using NLA. My previous music disorder had to work by using the player. This is because in Java Edition before, unlike Bedrock Edition, the jukebox wouldn't actually put in disc automatically. So we had this dropper here that would give the disc to the player. And we had this trapdoor that would open and close. And then the player would place it into the jukebox behind it. Then after a short delay, since our jukeboxes also wouldn't pull out the music disc, we then had to right click it to drop it out. This is what it would look like. And every time you place it in and remove it, we'd also have hopper minecarts that pick them up and drop them off at their associated music disc type. That was just done by using some redstone and some chests so that each music disc would go to their individual chest. Now because discs cannot stack, it means that you can't use a normal redstone sorter to sort them. So you could always use my Allay item sorters, which would cost you one Allay for every single disc type. Although I do have a Allay breeder, so you could get plenty of those, but it's so much easier to use redstone than messing around moving these entities. So I went ahead and updated my automatic disc sorter, so now it doesn't even need a player. Although the concept is quite simple, I did spend five hours live streaming, coming up with a super compact and simple to build design for your survival world. Although the redstone is very minimalist, it is actually quite ingenious. You just put the music disc in here. What happens is every time the hopper minecart comes over and it drives over top of this detector rail, it's going to send out a redstone pulse, which is going to power this dropper here. The dropper is then going to push the music disc into the jukebox, which is going to start playing it. When the disc is inside, we're also going to then see exactly what disc is inside because each disc produces a different redstone strength. The redstone strength is going to end up over here. And if you pay attention, you'll see that's when strength actually changes. This little device here is just a memory clock. So we remember what type of disc is inside because we remember what type of signal strength it is. Then we take this very unique redstone strength and we continue moving along with this comparator. We push it over here and then this big huge line of redstone is actually illustrating every single disc and the redstone signals that are associated with them. Notice as different discs go through, the redstone signal is actually changing different lengths. This is ultimately how I'm actually sorting the different disc out. Because the hopper minecart does go underneath this jukebox, the minecart can immediately pull out the disc which is inside the jukebox before it even finished playing. Then using that with the combination of the redstone signal, it will go over top of these rails which just underneath them are some hoppers which are trying to pull out the disc which is within inside the cart. But because the redstone is locking these hoppers, they can't pull out the disc until it gets to an area where there is no redstone. So in this case, it's going to drop off the disc right at this location here, which puts it in the correct chest. So all the previous hoppers can't take the item and all the hoppers are afterwards never get a chance to take out the item because only the very first one that's unlocked will take the item. So once the hopper minecart gets the item removed, it just bounces back and repeats the entire process over. So it's actually quite fast at pulling the disc out, sorting them, and putting them in the right location. But I went ahead and went one step further, connecting this up to my music disc farm. So if we go up here, this is my creeper farm, which is the same design I used in other farms like my copper farm. It consists of some cats, some spawning platforms, and some places for the creepers to fall down. You typically build this farm over oceans, so you don't have to worry about hostile mobs spawning anywhere else except for directly inside of your farm. Then the player would just AFK up in the air, that way there's no mobs being loaded underneath of it, and instead all the mobs will be forced to spawn directly inside of the creeper farm. Then inside of it here, we'd only get creepers to spawn because the trapdoors are so low, no other mobs will spawn inside. 
and we won't also get spiders because of the carpets blocking big enough area for them to spawn in. The creepers are then going to get scared by the cats on the different levels and they're eventually going to walk over, fall down into the water down below. This is all going to move them towards the center here. Once they fall down the chute, they're going to land on some dripstone point, which is going to do enough damage so that when the skeleton does hit them with this bow, it will kill them. I came up with this waterless golem and skeleton setup where the skeleton is seeing the golem because it can actually see its little red line from the skeleton's eyes, which is right there, all the way through and through the soul sand and continue through and all the way to, to this red line of the golems. And since the skeleton can see the golem, he tries to shoot it because they're quite hostile towards him. But as you can see, the arrows have to first pass through this very small hole, which you can't actually see in the soul sand, but it's definitely there. Oftentimes the skeleton will miss with its arrows, but if an arrow happened to go through it, by the time it gets over here, gravity has pulled it down too much and it can't make it through the second small hole. There's a 0% chance of the golem actually taking any damage. Now the creepers are killed by a skeleton. What happens is not only do they drop gunpowder, but they also drop one of the many different types of music discs. All the items are being picked up by the topper minecart and then moved down through these hoppers. We also got a item sorter here, which is sorting out the gunpowder. So you can still use this farm as like a gunpowder farm to supply your rockets, but it also produces disc as the discs won't get sorted off, they'll get put over here into this barrel. And then from there, they're getting pulled and put into the music disc sorter. So by combining this, you got a really cool system of not only creepers, but also music disc and having it all sorted. And Dark Oak Disaster made a bedrock version of this, which I've linked in the description. And if you'd like to help update any of my farms for the bedrock edition, send me a direct message on my Discord. You might be wondering why in the world would you want to have all the different type of discs and so many of them. Which gets me back to my initial point that these are not just jukebox players. But they are way more than that. That's because these are actually a versatile clock. Because depending on what type of music disc you put inside of it, we will have to play that entire music disc before wrapping around and putting it back inside again. And because each music disc has a different amount of time it takes to play through the entire thing. When any music disc does finish, it's going to send out a redstone signal at a consistent repeatable time. Then all we have to do is pull a signal from one of these areas, such as like a comparator reading when the music disc goes past this dropper or when the music disc is inside of the jukebox and then leaves it. We can not only get a consistent clock, but we can also use the different comparators to power things at different times. Such as this comparator will stay on while there's a music disc inside, where this one will only flash on for a short period as the item passes by. I made a few different types of these jukebox players. This one here will only activate once the disc falls over here. Then this comparator here can detect that there is a disc in there and it will extend and power it back into the system again. Where this one here will detect when this hopper unlocks as it's currently being locked by this powered jukebox. And then once that happens, it just sends a signal around with enough delay so it can push the same disc back into the jukebox. We also looked at this one earlier, which just has a constant observer clock, which is constantly trying to push anything in here back into the system. These three designs here only take a single music disc, where this one here takes multiple ones, which are in different phases of getting cycled around. When this one ends, what happens is the jukebox stops powering, which will update this note block, which will quasi-connectivity update this piston, which will then retract updating this dropper, which then learns he's no longer being powered by this jukebox until the next disc gets pushed in by this hopper, in which case he does remember to get powered and then he'll push his disc upwards and then just cycles around. The cool thing about this design is that you don't have to use the same music disc. You can put in whichever ones you want. This not only can let you play four different musics in a repeat loop, but you can also choose to put in different discs so you can get different signals. Or if you want to be randomized, you can always put more than one disc in the system. And then when it powers, I'll just choose one of them. Now the times the music discs range from about one minute to six minutes. And you can make a combination of different discs to get different times. Throughout longer times, you can use T flip flops with these. So that like every two discs, it'll send off a signal or like four discs or eight discs. Or you can combine this with like a hopper counter. You can keep track of how many times the disc goes in and out before a certain output will occur. This would be definitely helpful for going for longer time clocks where before a hopper clock would only get you up to around four minutes. And getting times longer than that, you'd have to chain hopper clocks together or start using like a daylight sensor, which goes off of how much time is going by. Now the downside to this clock versus like a hopper clock is that it does use music discs, which are a lot harder to come by than items which are normally inside of hopper clocks. This also takes a jukebox, which does cost a diamond. And it ends up using similar materials as like a hopper clock where you have like two hoppers. You also would probably need a comparator and some other bits of redstone similar to this. 
But if you start needing to get longer times and needed to chain hopper clocks together, then that's where the advantage of this would come back. The jukebox also plays music, which can be quite annoying over time, especially if it's some type of machine you have to be around a lot. Now you can always come in and just turn your music off like I normally have, but it's not as easy like stopping noise as like putting a block over top of a note block. Do you ever think you'd use one of these disc clocks in your world? And if so, where at? You can take a look at these more closely with the schematics or the world downloads, as well as all my other crazy farms, which are part of my Farm Everything Minecraft series. Now see how I'm designing an automatic farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft, or this one about complex redstone machines. And let your favorite Minecrafters know about the crazy cool uses for jukeboxes. And remember to join my Twitch live streams where we went ahead and built all these up. I live stream every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all who joined my live streams and helped me improve my redstone. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!